Welcome to Crafty Beach. This is Julie, and today I put together some of my best coastal Thanksgiving DIYs for you using items from the Dollar Tree. Okay, let's get started with our first Thanksgiving DIY. I got this great wood turkey at the Dollar Tree, and I thought I could transform him into a driftwood turkey. A little bit of a coastal touch too. So the first thing I'm doing is I'm just going to go all over the little wood turkey and stain it with some antique wax by Waverly. The reason I'm doing this is because I want to cover it in driftwood and you might be able to see through so I kind of want the back of the turkey to look like driftwood as well. Now once I stained it I thought it was a little too dark and I'm kind of playing around with what kind of driftwood I'm going to use. I ended up using this driftwood. I got this on Amazon and I'll post a link below. But usually I get my driftwood at Target. And so you could get it either place. Target has a great vase filler. It goes on sale a lot. It might be less expensive than this. I'm not sure. But um, whatever you've got. And you can use real driftwood too if you have enough of it. And so since it was a little darker than the driftwood that I'm going to be using today, I'm just going to distress all over that stained turkey with some ivory. And then I'm going to go back and follow that up with a baby wipe. And it's going to give me that same kind of color scheme that we got going on with the driftwood. Now, this driftwood package didn't have a lot of driftwood and I didn't want to use all of it for this turkey. And so I'm only going to do the feathers with it. And so these are kind of long pieces. And so I'm going to kind of put them where like the wood sign tells me to put them like for feathers. And I'm just attaching those with hot glue. I use the uh, Gorilla Glue hot glue works great for wood. And I'm just going to kind of go up and do a one piece of driftwood for each feather to get me started. Then I'm going to go in and try to fill in the gaps with more driftwood. Just kind of laying it all out in advance, kind of seeing what's going to fit where, what would look good. And since I stained the back of that turkey with driftwood, or to look like driftwood, it doesn't require quite as much driftwood to cover this. I'm just going to start hot gluing this down. I'm kind of overlapping these feathers on top of the other driftwood feathers. And also gluing it to the sign. It's looking really cute already. What do you think? I love Thanksgiving and I a lot of people just skip it. And I, I always like to decorate for it too. So the next thing I want to do is I want to cover the turkey with some of these little blue pebbles that I get at Dollar Tree. And they're very heavy. So to attach them, I'm going to use a really thick glue. This is the tacky glue from the Dollar Tree. And as you can see, I put a really thick coat of that glue down. And then I'm going to just start sprinkling those little blue pebbles all over. I love those. I've used those for so many DIYs. They're a perfect beachy color and it's just a wonderful texture to use for a DIY. So I'm just kind of making sure that I have those all down. And I'm also going to glue on top with a little bit of that spray adhesive glue, also from Dollar Tree, to make sure this is down. And I'm going to start the drying process with my heat gun. But you'll notice with the tacky glue and this, the longer you can let this dry, the better, the more they're going to stay on. I'm just going back and filling in any gaps around the edges where there might not be any blue pebbles. And then we're going to let this dry for a little bit. Super cute. I love blue for every holiday you know, and especially for Thanksgiving. So this is what we've got. We've got our cute little driftwood feather turkey with the little blue pebbles all over. Now I just need to find a way to make my little turkey stand up. And I'm just going to use one of these little five below jingle blocks on the back. You can use whatever you've got if you want yours to stand up too. And I'm just making sure that all my pebbles stay down there. 
And in case you can see it, I'm just going to go ahead and do a quick stain on the back of that as well. Probably not necessary, but you might be able to see some of it. And then I'm going to attach that wood block to the back of this. It's kind of a heavy piece, but the wood block definitely works to help it stand up. So I got it all dry. They're all staying on there. And now we can make the stand. I'm just going to glue it up and down like that. Attach it with hot glue. We have our first a Thanksgiving a DIY with a coastal touch. I think it turned out so cute. I'm really in love with this little turkey. I can't wait to put it out for Thanksgiving this year. And this is how it looks on my shelf. Isn't it pretty? And as you can see, I didn't really have to use a lot of driftwood, um, but I still kind of got that driftwood effect. Okay, our next DIY, I'm going to use one of these little thankful um, MDF um, wood words, I guess, from Dollar Tree and a thrift flip sign. I love getting trays and stuff like that at the thrift store. I know my Goodwill has like 50% off housewares or the other day they did the whole store. Um, and it's just, you can get stuff so cheap, just as cheap as the Dollar Tree. Now I'm going to mix my own chalk paint for this DIY. So I use turquoise acrylic and I'm using calcium carbonate. I get that on Amazon as well and some water and making my own chalk paint because your girl is cheap. <laughs> it's cheaper to do that, I think. And you can make your perfect custom color of chalk paint. Now, I love the color of the tray, the woven. And so I'm going to kind of protect that. So I'm just going to go ahead and tape that off with some painter's tape so that I don't get any paint on there. And I'm going to paint the wood frame of the tray. I want to make a tray that I can sit on my shelf that says thankful. This was the perfect size for that word. And I'll post a link below for the blog where I got the chalk paint recipe as well. Um, in case you want to make your own. And I'm just going to start painting that. Since it is a chalk paint, it's pretty thick. So it covers that dark wood pretty well. And I'm just going to kind of go around all the edges that you're going to be able to see and also paint the little handles there too. I thought this was just such a quick and easy thrift flip. Still one of my favorites. This would not fit in my storage bin. So it has been sitting out in my garage all year and I'm always looking at it going, oh, that's so pretty. But definitely going to use this again this year and just making sure that I have all of my surfaces covered there. Um, the handle was kind of wrapped in some different kinds of things. So I'm just making sure that I get in all the little nooks and crannies there and I get really good coverage. Trying my best not to get any on that beautiful tray. I find trays are just, they're just very accessible, at least at my thrift stores. It seems like people must be donating those all the time. So now to paint the thankful word, I'm also going to mix some chalk paint for this. I'm just using ivory acrylic, calcium carbonate, and water, and mixing that up, and we are going to paint this word. I love these words. Um, you definitely have to paint them since they're not like real wood. Uh, they definitely look like kind of a cardboard finish. And then I'm going to go in with a brush because I want to go in all the different edges of the letters too, because I think you're going to be able to see that from the sides of our little tray. And I want to display this just on my shelf for Thanksgiving, um, maybe with some pumpkins. So it takes probably longer to do all the sides of the, the letters than it does the front. But it definitely, I think, makes a difference. Just make sure you don't forget any, like the little holes in the A, the K, that different thing. Um, and I'm going to use another one of these thankful words today. They're just great for Thanksgiving. Can't beat it. And I'm just going over the top to make sure that I have very good coverage. I really want that ivory to pop against that wood tray. Now I want to give it a little bit of a coastal vibe. So I'm going to go back and use some of that ivory and just distress very lightly all over with a chunky brush. It's going to give me that coastal beachy vibe of that blue, kind of lighten up that turquoise a little bit as well. If I get too much on there, I just go back with a baby wipe. So you can't really mess it up. 
And I'm just gonna go ahead and take off the painter's tape and we are about ready to put this little Thanksgiving tray together. A painter's tape from the Dollar Tree, not the best. <laughs> so if you're gonna recreate something like this, definitely you might wanna use better. <laughs> it's cheap though, so I still use it. And I'm just cleaning that all up and we can attach the thankful word to the front. This is just a very simple DIY. Just some paint and some glue. And we have a beautiful little decorative piece for Thanksgiving. I'm just putting hot glue on the back. Pretty good amount because I want it to stay on there when it is sitting on its side. And that's all there is to it. I'm not going to add any more details or anything like that. I think it is a pretty all on its own. But I do want to go back and just kind of lightly distress the thankful uh, with some anti wax by Waverly. Just again to give it a little bit more of that coastal vibe, but very light. And then just wipe off the excess with a baby wipe. There is our little thankful tray. Isn't it cute? I love a good thrift flip. And this is how it looks displayed with some of those little ivory pumpkins in front. Very beachy, ready for Thanksgiving. Okay, I got another thrift flip. Um, as well as trays, baskets galore at my thrift store. So always a good place to do that. I'm going to use lots of different blues in this. And I want to do like kind of like a cornucopia, um, like a coastal vibe. And so I found like some gourds at the Dollar Tree and some a package of little gourds and also some of this like Indian corn. Um, one was like a single pack and one was a two pack. They're all from Dollar Tree. And I'm just kind of fitting what I can get in there. I also have some of these pumpkins. These are from the Dollar Tree. I painted those for Thanksgiving, uh, just a softer color of pumpkin. Now I'm just going to start painting these things beachy colors. So I am using this blue chalk paint for this gourd. And I'm just going to kind of work with different colors. This one is, I believe, agave. I think that last one might have been pool. I'm just trying to like mix and match. Um, if you put a skewer down these, they're made out of foam. It makes it a little bit easier to uh, paint those. And then I'm also just going to use some foam to dry those. So it makes it a little bit easier. This one is even a lighter color of blue. You can mix a color of blue and then do different shades. Or if you have different shades of blue chalk paint like I did, then you can just kind of create like your own little ombre effect by painting all of those gourds. I'm also going to paint the corn. It's not very pretty, so I think it's definitely going to look better in different shades of blue. Just kind of using a brush so I can kind of get down like in between the little kernels of corn. Um, kind of gives a fun little effect and it's very inexpensive. That is really expensive to buy like at my grocery store, the little Indian corns. And I'm just going to go over my gourds with some more chalk paint to make sure they had a good coat. And as you can see, here are all my different shades. I also painted the little stems of the gourds to match. And this basket, I think, is perfect. I love, like, the wicker. And I'm just going to fill it with some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. And these are those Dollar Tree pumpkins. I painted the color of pumpkin. And we're going to do kind of a blue and orange theme. And I'm just going to start arranging all these little fun things in there. I love a blue gore. That's really cute. Until I have a nice full little basket for Halloween. Now this will look great sitting on a counter or a table. I'm going to also put a dollar tree, some Dollar Tree a starfish in there as well super cute. I love the contrast of that. Definitely gives you a beachy feel. And this would look great. Um, it could even be a centerpiece for your Thanksgiving table. Now I got it all in there and then I decided that handle I thought was a little too dark for beachy coastal vibe. So I'm just going back with some ivory chalk paint and I'm just going to distress that handle. I think that kind of gives it more of a beachy vibe, kind of goes more with um, the color scheme in my house. But I probably should have done this step before I filled it perfectly with all my little cornucopia. 
it's okay if some of the wood shows through. I just kind of wanted to brighten it up a little bit. And I think that looks even better. And this is how it looks like as a centerpiece on my table. Super cute and very inexpensive to put together for Thanksgiving. Okay, next up, we're going to decorate my coffee bar for Thanksgiving. I'm going to use like one of these little wooden box signs from the Dollar Tree. And I was trying to kind of like pop it out so I could kind of like repaint the back, but it wasn't really coming. So we're going to just give up and use the back of this. We'll turn this around backwards. And I want to make a shell turkey for my coffee bar. So I thought this sign was about the perfect size combined with one of those little bikini shells from the Dollar Tree. And I can make a cute little shell turkey, I think, out of those. So again, I am mixing some of my own chalk paint with turquoise and calcium carbonate and water. I'm going to brighten this one up a little bit. And what I want to do is I kind of want to do like a... Um, a beach scene for the background of my little shell turkey, kind of make it look like he's at the beach. So I'm going to combine that turquoise chalk paint that I made with some of the other chalk paint colors I have. And I'm just using a baby wipe to kind of blend those together. And doing a beach scene is so easy. It's just different shades of blue and then blending them together because that's what it looks like when you like look out at the ocean. You have all your different shades of blue and you definitely don't need to know how to paint very well to put something like this together. So you can see how I just did different shades of blue, like some can be greener, some can be bluer. And I just kind of keep working with it and blending them until I think it kind of looks like an ocean scene for the background. And this is going to make a great bell a backdrop for our little shell a turkey. <laughs> That's how it turned out. I think it's super cute. I'm going to mix up some more of that chalk paint with some ivory. And we can start working on our little shell turkey. I love those little, it's like a shell bra. It's from the summer section at Dollar Tree. You can probably still find them depending on your store. I know some of my like country stores, like they kind of keep these kind of out year round because they, I don't think they really sell out of them. They just kind of move them back by the party section or something. And I am filling in the little holes for the shell bra with some spackle because I don't want it to have any holes in it. I want it to um, be one solid shell. I want it to look like a shell. <laughs> so I'm going to go in now and paint this. I think this is the color hazelnut, I believe. And it's a chalk paint by Waverly. And just using a brush, I'm going to go all over that and then kind of distress it all over with a baby wipe to let some of that white shell come back and shine through. And then I'm going to paint, this is just a real seashell that I had from the beach. And I'm going to paint that. I think that color is cashew. And then I'm also going to do a seashell for the turkey head. And I'm going to paint that one of that, that nice cashew color as well. Now I'm going to go back with that ivory paint that we mixed and we're going to distress all over just to give, pick up, pick up all that texture in the shell, kind of make it look more like a, a real giant shell. It's a little perfect to be a shell, but it kind of, kind of looks real. And then we can start putting this guy together. The first thing I'm going to do is use a paint pen and draw on some very simple little turkey legs onto the beach and then kind of try to figure out where I want to put this turkey. I'm going to do a fine bead of hot glue all around the edges of the plastic shell and glue that onto the front of our ocean scene. And I just thought it would be easier to put the little turkey legs on there first. And then I'm going to glue this part of the turkey on as well. And this is going to be like part of the turkey head. I'm going to do like, it's like one of the cone shells. And I just kind of painted that a little bit orange for the beak. It's kind of pointy. I thought it might make a good uh, like turkey head. <laughs> but you can use whatever you've got. The orange didn't really pop. So I went back over it with some ivory and then used my orange paint pen again. So that orange color would pop a little bit more on the shell and not just blend in. I thought this was such a fun idea to do a little shell turkey. I really think it turned out cute. 
And I'm just going to attach that with some hot glue. Like that with a little beak down. And then I'm just going to use a Sharpie to draw on some little eyes on the side of our shell turkey head. And then I wanted to frame it out a little bit more just to make it more of a substantial piece. So I'm going to use some of that chunky wood from the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to make a very simple little rustic frame by cutting these pieces. I'm going to cut two pieces exactly the same height as the turkey. And then we'll go back and cut two more pieces, this time going from side to side of those pieces. That way I don't have to miter it or anything. And then I just went in and I'm staining both sides of the frame pieces with some Antique Wax by Waverly and kind of generously going over that with a baby wipe because I really want like the cool wood grain of that craft wood to show through. Also doing the edges that you're going to be able to see. And we're going to have a great wood frame for a little turkey. I think this um, helps because as you can see, like the shell turkey is kind of sticking way out from the frame. And this is a very um, kind of a substantial frame that I'm adding to it. It just makes the, the piece feel a lot better. And so I'm going to glue it like flush with the back of that existing frame that is on there where it kind of juts out a little bit in the front and I'm just attaching that with hot glue. Gonna do the inner, the sides first. Those are the ones that I cut a little bit shorter and then we can attach the top and the bottom. I love using uh, this, these little chunky slats from the Dollar Tree for frames. They're so easy to work with and I think they turn out really nice for $1.25 a piece. And just finishing that last up, I'm also gluing to the side pieces there as well, you can see. And no need to miter quarters or anything like that. Just a simple little rustic coastal farmhouse frame for our little turkey. Now, I thought I would decorate a little bit since he's at the beach. And I'm going to add some of these little tiny starfish. I get these on Amazon. I'll try to remember to post a link below for those as well. They are so great for crafting. I've went through a couple packages of them because I love them so much. Now I got it all together and I thought it was done. And then I remembered that I wanted this shell to be like the other way. That's kind of like how a turkey body shaped. I had glued it on there upside down and I didn't even notice. So I'm just trying to... Pull it off, touch, and then I have to touch up my paint because I totally messed it up when I did that. But it was driving me crazy that I put my shell on there upside down because I wanted it to be upside down. It's going to be shaped just like a little turkey body. So we're going to go back and fix it here. If I can get all of the damage repaired <laughs> and see how that makes way more sense. So I'm just going to glue that seashell back on there upside down this time. Now it looks way more like a turkey. Okay, the next DIY is another thrift flip. I picked up this very colorful, kind of large ceramic turkey at the thrift store. Turkeys uh, seem to be, you be able to find them year round at the, the thrift store. People like to donate these things. And I'm just going to do a very monochromatic thing with this. Nothing special. It's got all this great texture and stuff on there. And so I'm using that turquoise chalk paint that I mixed earlier. And we're just going to go over everything. Like the pumpkins, the turkey. I just want one big blue turkey for our um, coffee bar. And I like this color. I think it really kind of matches in with that blue pebble turkey that we made earlier with the driftwood. And blue is just a great surprise for Thanksgiving. Now make sure if you find something similar like this, you know, to use a brush because you want to get in there as much as you can. Uh, and as you can see, like all the feathers and everything on there is just great. This would have taken forever to try to recreate. And so sometimes a thrift flip is your best friend. And I got a good coat on there and gave it a quick dry and just kind of going back in and touching it up more. I want, I don't want any of those colors to shine through 
because it was very colorful and kind of tacky looking before. And I just want this to be very simple. You know, a lot of times you'll find pieces at Target and stuff like that, where it's just like a monochromatic animal. And that's definitely what I'm going for. So um, on this coat of paint, I'm just going in there and trying to get all of the little brown cracks and stuff in there painted that bright blue color. So it'll just kind of really blend in together. I think this turned out so pretty. I really like it. And it's a nice large size turkey for my coffee bar. Now this is just going to be a very quick sign. I got this little tiny sign at the thrift store. You can use whatever you've got. I'm just going to paint mine ivory with that ivory chalk paint that we made. And I just wanted a very simple little Thanksgiving sign. So once I get it painted, um, I'm just going to use a, a Dollar Tree window decal for Thanksgiving to make a very simple little sign, kind of like something that you would use for a tear tray. Speaking of tear trays, I did do a Thanksgiving tear tray last year as well in this blue coastal theme. I'll try to remember to post a link to that below as well. It turned out really fun. And a lot of times coffee bars, you you need little small projects like this, um, kind of like you would need for a tear tray. So I finally got that all painted and looking good and I can go over it with some uh, matte Mod Podge. And I'm gonna just use this one that says Gobble Gobble. Super cute, super easy. And that sign was just about the perfect size. I'm also gonna do a coat of Mod Podge on top. That's going to take away some of the glossiness from the window decal, make it less obvious that it's a window decal, kind of make it look more like a hand-painted sign, and so cheap. And then I'm also going to slightly distress it with just a tiny bit of ivory um, to kind of break up the perfect writing and stuff like that, just to give it a little bit more of a coastal vibe. And then um, I found this at the Dollar Tree. The colors are perfect. It's a plastic pumpkin tray. I'm not going to do anything to it. I'm going to use that as is. But I just wanted to show you some of the things in case you see it here in my final reveal. And you're like, well, I didn't see that. I also got this on Etsy a few years ago. Pour some gravy on me. Super cute piece of art that I bought on Etsy. And I don't know if I still have the link to that, but I'll try to find it. Super cute. But you could totally make that with your Cricut. That was before my Cricut. And then I found a gourd and a pumpkin and great colors from the Target dollar spot. Now, my next DIY is I'm going to take some of these Dollar Tree white plain mugs and just make some fun little whimsical Thanksgiving mugs to go with my coffee bar. I put a bar in that has hooks. And so... Four of my coffee mugs are like always on display right there at my coffee bar. So I'm going to do four of these. And these are kind of an ivory color, so they're going to be great. And I'm just going to use some of this blue. I believe I got this vinyl at the Dollar Tree. It's like a turquoise blue. And um, this skinny font. And I'm just going to do little Thanksgiving phrases on each one of them. I love that the skinny font. It's very, gives you that Ray Dunn look. But the teal is going to kind of make it go with our like coastal Thanksgiving theme. The only thing is, is the skinny font can be a nightmare to weed, especially if you're using cheap vinyl like this, but you can kind of maybe take your time or use better vinyl. There's that too. I love how cheap Dollar Tree vinyl is, but I'm always not a big fan of weeding it sometimes. So I'm just kind of taking my time and going through and weeding out all those words. Some of them stayed put better than others, as you can see. And just little fun Thanksgiving phrases. We have pumpkin spice. We have turkey day. We have a gobble gobble and we have give thanks. And this is that paper transfer paper that I get on Amazon. I'll try to post a link to that as well. It works great for vinyl, especially this cheap stuff. And I'm going to kind of trim it up a little bit just to help me with my placement to make sure that I get all the words on my mugs lined up well. And it's just like a sticker. It's just going to be peel and stick. And the great thing about this project is that it's so easy to peel off after Thanksgiving. Um, 
You can use permanent vinyl or removable vinyl. You're going to be able to get it off if you want to. If it's permanent, it doesn't really want to come off. Use a little bit of heat. It will definitely come off. And then you can totally repurpose this. Or I actually saved these for Thanksgiving again this year because I thought they were really cute. And so just lining those up and putting them on. It's as simple as that. We've got our turkey day. And this is just such a cheap way to do that. You know, I have, I'm set up for sublimation and I know a lot of people have like the Cricut mug presses and stuff like that, but it's really so easy to do your own mugs that I can't um, imagine like spending all of the money for that because I don't think it would be really be worth it, but it would be fun to do like a sublimation or that, I guess it's the infusible ink um, that Cricut sells to do that. And, but a little bit of vinyl is going to go a long way. You could also do like Thanksgiving pictures if you were doing your coffee bar as well. I also found this gourd and pumpkin at the Target Dollar Spot too. And they're going to be on my coffee bar. I just wanted to show you. And this is a, a actual Ray Dunn gnome that I've had for years. I got this at TJ Maxx, I believe. But the colors don't really work, but some of it does. So I'm just going to paint his shirt ivory to kind of like get rid of what was there and see if I can like just kind of change the color scheme of something that I already had um just to make it kind of go with my coastal Thanksgiving theme so I went in and painted that all ivory with some chalk paint it did a good job of color covering up like the plaid shirt that he had on before. Then I'm going to go back with some of that turquoise chalk paint that we mixed and paint his shirt turquoise. It's going to kind of make him coordinate. I love the little wood block that's on there. It already says thankful in that the skinny font. So that's going to coordinate well with those mugs that we just made. And he's already got like a white beard and a little wood nose. Super cute. So he didn't need much. He just needed a little bit just to make him match a little bit better. And I'm going to finish him off with one of those little tiny starfish on the end of his little gnome hat. And he's ready to go. Now, this is another one of those thankful words. I'm going to use this to hang at the top of my coffee bar. But I want it to look like wood. So I'm just using a brush and some antique wax by Waverly and working in one direction, kind of distressing it, trying to give it that like, wood appearance and kind of following that up with a paper towel just to kind of make it look wood since it doesn't really look wood. It's already got a hanger and everything on there. I'm just going to leave that on there and I don't have a lot of room above my coffee bar and I think this is going to be the perfect little final touch for it. Now I was worried that you're going to be able to see it from the edges so I am distressing all of the edges with that antique wax from Waverly as well. And then I'm going to go back over it with like a lighter color of brown. I think this is maybe cashew. And I'm just going to use a chunky brush um, from the Dollar Tree and just kind of distress in that same direction, trying to, again, make it, give it a little bit more of a wood grain. Okay, now this project is super fun. I'm just using some of this orange felt. I think I got this at either Dollar Tree or Dollar General. I thought it was like the perfect color of pie. So I'm just using my ruler and I'm making some triangles. I thought it'd be really fun to finish up my Thanksgiving coffee bar with a little pumpkin pie banner. So you can see how I just used a pen to cut that out. And then I'm going to alternate going back and forth. That way I don't waste any of that felt. And we're going to cut out little pie triangles. Just trying to make sure that I got them all cut about the same size. And trimming those up. Perfect color for pumpkin pie, don't you think? Okay, I think I'm going to need more. So I'm going to go ahead and cut out another one. I always like to do like an odd number on my banners, like three or five. And I think I wasn't very happy with one of those. So I'm just kind of recutting that. So a total of five of the little orange felt triangles. And then I'm going to use a, some of this burlap. This is from Walmart. They also have this at Dollar Tree now and maybe a little bit smaller of a size. 
Um, you can use whatever you've got, but what I'm going to do is glue this onto that. See how it has like the finished edge of the burlap? I want that to be the crust of my pumpkin pie. So I'm just going to alternate gluing that kind of um, so I don't use too much burlap. And I'm using that finished burlap edge for our pie crust. And I'm just attaching that to the burlap with hot glue. It's going to make um, this a little bit um, more substantial having two layers. And then I'm just going to go in and cut around the orange felt. Just leaving the burlap for the crust. And I'm going to do that on all five of these little pumpkin pie pieces. This was so easy to put together and it was so much fun. And then I wanted like a little a whipped cream. So I was trying to think of different ways. I had some white pom-poms. I thought about doing that for little dollops, but they were a little too big. So I'm going to use some of this um, caulk mastic from the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to use it like frosting just by cutting off the tip and doing a little swirly swirl. Make it look like a little dollop of Cool Whip on top of all of our pies. And this will dry up and be fine for a decor piece. And I decided to go back over and do a little bit more before it started drying to make sure it looks like a nice sized dollop. Now I'm just going to need to string these together um, to make a little banner for our coffee bar. And I'm just going to use um, some Dollar Tree uh, twine to do that. I'm just kind of going in with my heat gun and making sure that that um, is going to start drying. I don't want to mess it up because it looks so cute. Now I'm just finding the center here and hot gluing that burlap seam onto that. And I'm just going to kind of evenly space these out. I'm not going to like loop it over that where you could like change it. I'm just going to kind of put them side by side. They're going to be kind of close together on this pennant. And um, just very easy little project that's going to take um, this thing the Thanksgiving DIYs to the next step and look great for Thanksgiving dinner. I'm just going to go ahead and attach my other two here. And I think this is going to be the last a project for our Thanksgiving coffee bar. Stick around to the final reveal and I'll show you all of the Thanksgiving coffee bar DIYs together. Just makes it easier that way because there were so many. And I have more DIYs for you today. But first, I want to take a quick moment out of today's video and let you know that I've introduced memberships. For $4.99 a month, you can get early ad-free access to my videos. If you would like to join, just hit the join button on my YouTube page and you should be in. Now let's DIY a coastal Thanksgiving tablescape. I'm going to make a large centerpiece with those pumpkin wreath forms from the Dollar Tree. And how I'm going to make it is through macrame using some of this white rope from the Dollar Tree. Now, the first step is I just want like the little thirds of the rope. And so all I have to do is unwind it to get three of those. Now, it's really an easy macrame technique. I'd never done it before I did this one, um, but I really like how it turns out. You're using like the wire of the reform as one of the lines. So we're going to go ahead and start with one. This is going to require two of those pumpkin wreath forms from the Dollar Tree and rope. So let me show you how I got started on this. Now, the very first step is I'm just going to tie a knot. So about halfway down, I'm just going to tie a knot on the very first row of the pumpkin like this. Then I bring the rope over the top of the reform in an L shape. And then I bring the other rope under it and then through the hole over here on the left side. That's going to make a really cool a macrame knot. And basically, I just have to repeat that over and over again on this to make a really cool centerpiece. So I form an L, I go over and then through the hole over on the left side. 
So once you get that down, L down through the hole, it becomes really easy. And it's actually kind of therapeutic to do it. It's just a really fun thing. I've been really enjoying macrame since I've kind of learned how to do it. So it's going to create a really cool pattern. And we're just going to speed this up and I'm going to be a super fast tire. And I wanted to do like a beach theme for Thanksgiving. And so everything's going to look very coastal. And I think this Dollar Tree rope is definitely going to add to that. Now, do you see the really cool pattern that is forming in that? It's like a spiral chunky pattern. And that rope took me all the way to here. So I'm just trying to make it work. <laughs> and then I'm going to start on the next one. So same thing. I just tied a knot and I'm doing that L under and through the hole all the way down. And I'm going to do every single row here of the inside of this pumpkin form. You know, this would be really cute, too, if you were going to hang it on your door, if you just wanted to do one of these. But I'm going to put do two of these and then put them back to back to make a really cool centerpiece. It's large. It's kind of cool as a centerpiece because you can see through it. And it's going to have like an opening inside. And so um, you can put stuff in it as well. Now, as you can see, like when I'm doing the macrame, it's not going all the way to the bottom, but I'm just doing it as long as the rope is there. So we got all of those done. Now, at this point, I was trying to decide, you know, is that enough? You know, do I need to start again? And of course, you know, I'm a perfectionist. I'm going to start again, but I'm going to go ahead and just start trimming off the excess here. Because I don't really want it to be real obvious when I start and stop this. So just giving that a trim. Now there's not a whole lot that's needed here at the end. I'm just going to kind of glue these little ends down. And so it kind of looks like they're kind of tied together. Just kind of molding them with the hot glue. And those finger protectors from the Dollar Tree, they work pretty well. You can't, they, it does still kind of get a little bit hot through it, but it works pretty well. So what I did is I did the same thing on all of them. You can see it looks way cleaner. And now I can start with another rope and um, fill that in all the way. So if you had a bit of a longer rope that you did that with, you wouldn't have to start and stop and make it a little bit easier. But again, I wanted to use all supplies from the Dollar Tree. So a little bit short. So I'm just trying to fill that in as far as I can go till I get to the bottom and tie that off and then trim it. And I'm going to do that on all of them. Now, I'm not going to leave in any of the wire reform like exposed. All of it's going to be eventually macrame. It just turned out so pretty. Um, I just recently got this out for Thanksgiving this year, and I just love it. It's so pretty. It's, it looks so high end. So it's worth all of the effort. So what I did is I took another one. I went and put a good TV show on, and I did the same exact thing on the second one. Now it's just a matter of putting them together. When you put them back to back, the stems don't line up perfectly. So I just use some wire cutters and I just cut off the stem on one side. Now we need to attach them together. And so I'm going to use rope to do that. I'm just tying it off here in the middle where uh, the stem would be. And I want to do like that same macrame pattern. Um, all around the edges of the pumpkin, it's going to serve two purposes. It's going to tie them together and attach them, but it's also going to continue that really cool macrame pattern all the way around. So I just, it's kind of hard to see, but I do it until the section's full and then I just kind of skip over to the next section and I keep doing it along the top on this side. And we're going to go down the side here until I run out of rope. And this was a great way to attach them together, but also continuing that really cool macrame pattern. So just going to start a new rope and then we can continue this on right here. 
Again, I'm using the, the wires together as one of the macrame. I'm doing the L shape over it and then pulling it down and through the hole on the left side. And again, once you learn this um, knot, it's gonna be so easy for you to do. Now it gives you a really chunky like spiral pattern. You can kind of adjust it a little bit once you get it going um, and kind of adjust how chunky it looks just by twisting it. So we're doing the other side here. I started at the top again, coming down the sides with another rope. And we are getting there. And I thought it would be really fun to fill this up for Thanksgiving um, with some little pumpkins and things inside, something really easy. So we've got it all done except for the very, very, very bottom. And I'm just gonna use another rope to fill that in. And all of the, the wire is covered with the rope. And then I'm gonna do the same thing up here on the pumpkin stem so that none of the wire is showing. Now I just need to build a base for the centerpiece and I'm just gonna use one of these little um, Dollar Tree fall signs um, kind of on its back, kind of upside down. And I'm just hot gluing the pumpkin down into that so we can kind of decorate it. I thought this would make it stand up a lot better and it did make it a lot sturdier. Um, just hot gluing that down into that. And that's just a very lightweight sign. But the fact that it had a flat bottom, it kind of provided a base for it. Now I'm gonna use some of these burlap leaves from the Dollar Tree to decorate the base to kind of disguise that. Um, these are like the dark brown. I'm gonna use the dark brown and the tan. I think they also have these in orange. I love them, they're so pretty. And you know, this year they also have the leather leaves at the Dollar Tree, which would be really pretty for this as well. And I'm just gonna kind of alternate the different shapes and colors of the leaves and just cover up that base just by hot gluing those on. And it's gonna give me a nice fall touch around the base of the centerpiece. And I'm gonna finish this up with like a thankful sign, but if you didn't want to do that, you could just leave it like this. You could leave it up for the entire, you know, fall. And I'm just working my way around, covering up all of that sign down there. It's kind of a fall sign anyway, but I'm just kind of masking it all with those leaves and just attaching those with hot glue. It's kind of hard to show you this whole thing because it's so massive. Um, but it turned out really cool. So I'm just going to fill it with pumpkins. These are like just random pumpkins, um, like the mint green, bluish color. I picked up most of these at either Dollar Tree or Dollar Spot at Target. And I'm just going to kind of sit some in there because you can just kind of go between the bars and fill them in. And then I thought a little bit of Spanish moss might be a nice touch too. So I'm just gonna fill up that sign with a little Spanish moss too, just to kind of fill up the empty spaces. And I always think Spanish moss looks great for fall. And then the only thing I had left is I wanted it to say thankful. So I picked up two of these little thankful um, galvanized metal words from the Dollar Tree. These are kind of the larger ones, but you could probably make it work with the smaller ones too that come in the three pack. And I'm just gonna attach these with hot glue, one on each side of that bottom sign, just on top of the burlap leaves there. And it really gave it that final like Thanksgiving touch for a Thanksgiving centerpiece. And this is how it looks, guys. We have this beautiful macrame pumpkin centerpiece with supplies from the Dollar Tree. And it looks so high-end. It looks like something that you spent like $50 on for sure. And you can see the really cool texture that that pattern gave us. I absolutely love this piece. Hey guys, I wanted to take a quick moment to tell you about our private Facebook group. Um, there'll be a link in the description below and we would love to have you over there. I'm also on Instagram, TikTok, and Pinterest and my handle is Crafty Beach on YouTube. All one word on all three of those and I would love to see you there. 
Okay, our next project, we need to start working on the tablescape. So I wanted burlap chargers and they're so expensive, I thought I would make them. So I picked up some of these chargers from the Dollar Tree. These are the brass colored ones. And I thought we could make our own. So I just got some bulk burlap from Walmart. Super cheap to get burlap by the roll there to get it cut. And my Walmart has like hardly any of a craft department or fabric department. And they always usually seem to have burlap. Now getting somebody to cut it, <laughs> it's usually a challenge. So I cut the piece out larger than the charger. And then I want to do that for, I want to do like four play settings. There's only three people in our family and I was only going to do three. And then I had to go back and add one more because like looking at it, the symmetry of only having three play settings was driving me crazy. <laughs> I had to even it up. So here is our burlap and I'm just trying to use as much as I can. And they don't have to be perfect. We're just trying to cut out a bigger piece than the charger. Now to attach this to the charger, I am going to just glue that on. So I thought Mod Podge would work perfectly. So I'm gonna go over the little charger with a thick coat of Mod Podge and then glue the burlap to it. I kind of, this did take a little bit of time to dry but it turned out really well. And the fact that I used this brass color, it looked really good underneath the burlap. You can't see it through. So remember that if you know, when you're picking out your charger color to make sure that's gonna look something that's gonna look good because again, the burlap is fabric with holes in it. So you're gonna be able to see through it a little bit, but the brass totally matched it. Now, I don't want the burlap going anywhere. So I'm going over the top with Mod Podge as well, which is one reason why it took me some time to dry because I really wanted this attached. I want to be able to use these for uh, multiple holidays. And I want it to be, you know, I don't want it to get root if somebody gets some food on it. I kind of want it to be sealed where I could wipe it down as well. You know, the charger, you don't put any food on. It's just for decor, but it's got a plate right on it, you know, so... I tried to start drying that with heat gun, but after a while I realized it was just gonna need some time. I was a little worried that it was gonna look all blotchy like that, but it actually dried really nice. But I'm giving it my best effort here <laughs> to get it dried with my little dryer. If you don't have one of those dryers, I highly suggest you get one. This one was only $10. And I have a new Amazon shop and I'll post a link below. I have all of my essentials, the things that I use in my videos, my mats, all my, all my supplies I use. And I had a lot of fun setting that up. And so um, I will put a link to that below. Now, once I got it all dry, I'm using my fabric scissors and just cutting as closely as I can to the edges of the charger. The fabric scissors are really sharp. They go through the fabric well, and they give me a nice clean cut around the edges. But again, you're gonna have little areas like that. And so I just go back and kind of trim up any little imperfections that you can still see. I thought the burlap charger would look really coastal and go really good with all of the blues and the browns that we're gonna do for this tablescape. I had so much fun putting this Thanksgiving tablescape together. I hope you enjoy it. Now I need napkin rings. So basically I did the same thing on that charger to the other three. Um, you don't need to see it four times. But I got some of these uh, like little shower rings from the Dollar Tree and I thought we could make um, some coastal napkin rings. So I, I just grabbed four of them and I'm just making sure they're closed. And I'm gonna use some of the brown rope from the Dollar Tree to try to make some macrame napkin rings to kind of coordinate with um, the macrame pumpkin that we did for the centerpiece. So I'm gonna start here by tying it off, like right in the middle, and also like right where the napkin ring comes together. 
to kind of fill that area up. I'm going to do the same exact thing that I did on the pumpkin. I take the left one rope and I wrap it over in an L and I pull the other one through the hole, just knotting it up. It's going to give me that really cool macrame pattern for the napkin ring. Um, but this one's going to be the brown rope instead of the white. So I think they're going to look really good together. And I ordered some napkins on Amazon that are like um, a beachy blue, like mint green color, that really beautiful color I love. And I think that that's going to look really good with these and napkin rings. So there, it's actually pretty easy to do. Um, you just have to kind of get it in the right spot. Do that knot and just keep doing it until all the way around. These were probably some of the easiest napkin rings that I've ever put together. And they, they've held up really well. I really like how they look. So I'm getting towards the end and I'm tying that off in another knot. And I have just a tiny bit of rope left on there, um, but it's pretty full. And I'm going to go ahead and do that with my other three. Just tying it off, showing you one more time, the left over, under, and then through the hole, just like we did with the pumpkin. And, you know, I found some napkin rings since I made these that are actually sea turtles, and I can't wait to use those as well. Now, I got those at Goodwill. Can you believe it? Now, here at the end, I'm just going to use like that rope that's kind of left over on all of them. And I'm just going to attach that with hot glue, kind of down into a knot pattern. And it's going to fill up any of the space left here on the napkin ring. And I don't have to start anything new. Just one rope went all the way around the shower ring. And these shower rings are great to make napkin rings with. They're so inexpensive. And this is the cool pattern that I get. It gives you like a, um, like an edge on it as well. They just turned out really, really cool. And I'm just going to burn off all the fuzzies with a lighter to clean them up a little bit. And then we can put our napkins in them. So these are the napkins that I ordered. I will, I think I have these in my Amazon shop. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I do. You get 12 of them and they're beautiful cloth napkins. I couldn't really find anything that I wanted anywhere else. And so Amazon had the perfect color for me. And so let me show you how we're going to fold these and put them in the napkin ring. So I am going to lay it out. I'm going to fold it over like this. So we have like an upside down triangle. And then I'm going to grab it, pulling the two edges behind like that. And then just feeding that through the napkin ring. Very simple napkin fold, but I think it looks really pretty like that. So I went ahead and did the same exact thing on the other three. And we have all of our napkins ready for our Thanksgiving tablescape. I think they're so pretty. And I love those napkin rings. Now for little um, name tags for the place settings, I'm going to use some of these little wooden tags. I actually picked these up at Dollar General. I thought they were perfect. But you can get something probably pretty similar at Dollar Tree. I know they have the metal ones. I'm going to try something cool on these. I'm going to stain them with some antique wax by Waverly. And then I thought maybe we could, um, I'm going to use like my wood burning pen that I got on Amazon to try to um, like burn the name into them and see if that turns out. So I just, if this is just raw wood, these little tags. And so I'm just going to stain both sides with that antique wax by Waverly. So easy. I'm just wiping off the excess stain with a paper towel. And they were a little dark um, for what I wanted. I want that driftwood feel. So I'm just distressing or whitewashing them with just some ivory paint. This is chalk paint, but you can use whatever you want. I just kind of went get that coastal beachy feel on the front of these. And just wiping off the excess, kind of whitewashing it. And it gives me that driftwood feel that would be really good for a coastal tablescape. Now, this is my wood burning pen. I do have this in my Amazon shop. 
Not sure if it's currently available, but there's lots of different brands. You can totally pick them up on there if it's not. And I'm just going to draw on. It goes kind of on like a yellow marker, kind of a gold yellow marker. Super easy to use. And I'm going to do all of our names and then I'm going to do a guess because I did a fourth place setting. And then I'm using my heat gun. I am going to burn those names into the wood. So that like turns it like a darker brown, as you can see. And kind of looks like a wood burning. It's not quite as detailed if you were really going to, you know, use like a wood burning kit. My husband has one of those. He's always telling me to use it. And I don't know why I'd ever do. I think it's because when he does it, it takes so long. But I'm going to distress over with some Antique Wax by Waverly a little bit on top of it. to Kind of make it all blend in. And we have these personalized play settings. I think these are so fun. My plan is to tie these onto something for our Thanksgiving tablescape. I'm just making sure I have those like fully heated and dark and that's what they look like. I was pretty happy with them. I kind of forget I have that pen. I've only used it a couple of times. Now I'm just using the twine that came with it to uh, tie those on, any twine would do. And let me show you how we're gonna put this play setting together. So I'm just gonna use my regular ivory plates, my Ray Dunn plates on top of my burlap charger that we made. I found these great salad plates at the Dollar Tree. They're a beautiful color of blue. And then I bought some just little tiny white pumpkins from the produce section at the grocery store. And then I'm going to tie the little tag on each one of the pumpkins. So I got a pumpkin for each play setting. And I love the pop of blue from the little salad plate at the Dollar Tree. And I love that I can use my own plates in the setting, but it looks super coastal and beachy and fun. And then I'm gonna finish it off with a little starfish. And that is how a play setting looks. You can use the starfish from the Dollar Tree. I am trying to remember, I think these starfish, I actually got these on Amazon. Again, those will be in my Amazon shop. I'm gonna go ahead and attach the other three tags to our other little pumpkins. They're all different sizes, but it doesn't really matter, whatever you can find. And then I found this great table runner. I got this on Amazon as well. And it's like the white burlap and the tan burlap together. I thought that would look really good and coastal. This would probably be pretty easy to make as well. You could use some of the rolled burlap from Walmart. Um, but again, I'll post a link to this in my shop as well. And we're going to go ahead and start building this Thanksgiving tablescape. This is probably the fanciest tablescape I've ever put together for a holiday, but I really loved it. It was so pretty. So we're just going to start setting the table. I love the burlap chargers. They're so pretty. Just my existing white plates. The little blue salad plates I picked up at the Dollar Tree. And then our pumpkin with our little personalized tags to tell you where to sit. This will look really great with like a large table full of people and then finish it off with a starfish. And then we're just gonna set the table with our silverware. We have our napkin with our little rope napkin ream that we made and i'm just going to do that on all four of the play settings and then we can start decorating i got some of this lamb's ear garland from walmart that i have found that's the most inexpensive place to buy this stuff i absolutely love it and i'm gonna like have that like draped along like the brown part of the um, burlap of the runner in the middle Just kind of cutting the loops off the end. I end up cutting it in two pieces. That way I can have one on each side of that centerpiece that we just made. Our macrame pumpkin right here in the middle. And that's bringing in some of those like green and blue pumpkins as well. Goes nicely with the white pumpkins that we've already got. I got these little candle holders at the Dollar Tree. One is like a blue and then the other one is like a blue and white. They're already the perfect beachy colors. I didn't have to do anything to them. 
And then just on top of those, I'm just going to use some of these ivory pillar candles from the Dollar Tree. I also picked up these little jar candles from the Dollar Tree. They are beautiful, like mint green color. And then I thought some more pumpkins would be great too. I picked these up at the Target Dollar Spot. And we're just going to start building this middle section up and kind of scattering pumpkins around. I have an existing coral pieces. I love these. I use these in my decor. You've probably seen them before. I think I got these at Bell's Outlet. Um, and they're the perfect beachy blue colors. They're totally going to go with uh, the beach theme. And then I got some seashells from the Dollar Tree. And we can just start scattering those around in the tablescape. Some seashells all over. It's going to make it look really coastal and fun. And coastal is a perfect theme. Now, also some starfish. So yeah, these starfish are the real starfish. I picked these up on Amazon and they are in my shop. And I'm just going to kind of scatter those around as well. You can use whatever you've got. You know, you've probably got some beachy decor already. Just try to pull it all together. I'm just trying to use like a lot of the same colors. Then I thought some more of that rope that we made the macrame pumpkin with would be a nice touch. It's going to look really coastal. So I thought I would kind of string that along in there too. Kind of, kind of like a garland. Kind of going back and forth. Just building it up until I'm happy with it. And I really love how this turned out. And I thought maybe some colorful seashells would look good too. I also got these at the Dollar Tree. And I just keep building. And I really love how this turned out. You've made it all the way to the final reveal of today's video. I hope you got some great coastal Thanksgiving crafting inspiration from this video. I love this setup. I use it for Thanksgiving every year now and they turned out really fun. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button, comment your favorite Thanksgiving DIY in the comments below, and don't forget to subscribe. We're trying to get to 30,000 subscribers.
for better days to come and carry us like wind in our sails. Hold on tight, I can smell the shore, it's right in front of us if we just hold on tight. This vision that I saw is getting closer every dawn. Shout out to the following Crafty Beach Bum members. Thank you to Karen O'Haran, Coastal Couple, Pamela Bergeron, I Am Mojo Jojo, Melinda Elizabeth, Jamie Job, Susan Edmonds, Sandra Ray, Carrie R., Tracy Knight, Verna Noctigal, Nancy Wunner, Jan Zalata, Tammy Coates, Janae Farrington, Camelia Wren, Butterfly Mama, and Maria Grace. Thank you so much for supporting my channel. I appreciate you so much. And if you would like early ad-free access to my videos and member shoutouts in each video, be sure to hit the join button on my page. It's only $4.99 a month and you can cancel anytime. And it's an easy way for you to support me here on YouTube. If you would like to watch more Crafty Beach DIYs today, be sure to check out this video right here. Thanks for watching.